thanks FlexiSpot for sponsoring this video. They just sent me out this new standing desk. More about them later in the video. Excel is one of those tools that most people jump into. They're jumping into it at the very start and not really using it to its full potential. So let's look into some of the key functions that you can use that will save you days, hours, if not weeks. Some of the things that I use on a regular basis, especially to assess a lot of analysis or data, is things like VLOOKUP, HLOOKUP, MATCH, INDEX, and OFFSET. For example, if I've got a big bulk data I need to assess, I need to get a unique ID for each part. And I do this through a concatenation of both the floor, the beam type, and maybe even the low, depending on how much I need to drill down on the assessment. So this first gives me a unique ID that I can play with. So looking up things like MATCH and OFFSET, I can quickly find the correct answer by just doing a couple of cells across. And now this allows me to find both the minimum and maximum of certain things. It allows me to combine additional data that potentially will take me weeks, if not months to analyze if I'm doing it in another way. Well, we'll start off with match, for example. Match is a very simple example of an analysis that finds a result and gives you back how many rows it is across. So for example, we wanna find this answer here. We go the, what we're trying to search for, then we search for the array that we're searching in, which could either be a column, a row, or a certain portion of data. And is it going to be the exact match? Is it going to be less? Is it going to be more? And you can play around with it depending on what you're trying to find. And then it will give you the answer that you're seeking. So it will say, this result is found at this location. If it doesn't find it, it's clearly not in the data set. So sometimes you need to do a catch to see if error will return back blank because it can say that oh, I wasn't able to find any results and it would return an NA, which can cause errors in your assessment. But with that match, it gives you the number of rows that you are down. Now, what you can do now is with the offset function, if you're trying to find one specific answer here, but you need to get the result of a different cell over here. If your reference row is the whole column, you need to make sure that you are using minus one in these situations as the offset will be the top cell that you pick. So for example, if it wants an offset of one and you've used your reference cell and your reference cell would be an offset of one, it doesn't actually go to a reference cell of offset of zero. A lot of the time you need to be a little bit careful about how you're using it and making sure that you're referencing it correctly. A lot of the time I would do a check over to make sure it's referring to the correct cell or the correct concatenation of results that I was looking for. So a couple of creative things here. I've made a unique ID off to one side that I'm looking up. I'm then using the match function to find out how far down is that unique ID. I then use the offset function then to find out where that is on the row of data that I'm looking for. So there's many things that you can do, especially if you've got a bulk lot of data that you need to analyze and just need to pull out specific results. You can use this match offset function to pull out the results that you're looking for. So you don't need to do it manually. And so the VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP functions are very similar to this. They're just a little bit more tricky to use and sometimes don't produce the best results. So a VLOOKUP is a vertical lookup result and HLOOKUP is a horizontal lookup result. So it's just looking up on a set of data and saying, what is the vertical row that you're applying to? They can sort of work in the same way, but a lot of time I find you have a lot more function with the match and offset functions. What you can also utilize to this as well, sometimes if you have to look up data from different areas, you can use the indirect function in Excel as well. So indirect allows you to bring all the number that if you're building up certain results that isn't necessarily from the same area. So it builds up the function through a series of strings. So you can build up a string that's giving you a certain result. So you're saying, I need to refer to this cell. I'm referring to this spreadsheet. I'm doing this. And then using the indirect function, turn it back into a number that you're looking for that's correct. So it means that you can easily look up the functions that you want and make it a little bit more dynamic. So if you combine match, offset and indirect, it gives you a lot of control. But playing around with these three or four functions will be more than powerful, especially if you need to process data and pull out specific results. Another function that I use in combination a lot with this type of stuff is especially a count function. So use a count function saying if the cell below it is the same, especially in this concatenate, return a number and just plus, plus, plus all the way down until I get to a result of one, then it resets itself when it changes. So this means that I can do a, both a positive and negative lookup results. So I'm looking for a set of results of an indeterminate length. Because I've got the number of count functions, I know how many cells there is down. I know where the start, I know where the end is. So I'm able to look up with a sub range and give me either a minimum, maximum result. I can use ABS to get the absolute result. And from this, I can get a better assessment of how my data is being processed. So I've used the first cell here that we can see here as a count function to work out how many cells do I need to look down. I then use the next one across for the unique ID. And then I'm using both the upper bound and the lower bound using this indirect and match offset functions 
to find out where my top of my row is, where the bottom of my row is, and the data that I'm looking for. So this way I can concatenate and find both the envelope of the minimum and maximum of all the results that I got here in a very quick way to get to my final answer. I can then use another spreadsheet to look up that function. So if I'm trying to look up, say, this specific result for this beam, or for example, sometimes I might have a beam with a series of different load cases, but I was just trying to find the maximum of each of those load cases. So I'll have the beam name, I'll have the floor name, and I'll have the load case. So I have those three load cases that are concatenated into the match. Then from this, I can sort and find what the maximum moment is, what the maximum shear force is, what the maximum design loads are. So this means that I can get a series of data off an unknown size subset of results. You do need to be a little bit careful with it and test it to make sure it is picking the, the top result, is picking the bottom result, and is finding the minimum maximums. But after you set it down, you can just copy it down and have it across the whole spreadsheet. And with these lookup functions, it's very easy to make additional spreadsheets to find out where the answers are. So what I typically also like to do is create a spreadsheet that is the base spreadsheet that I need to find everything in. I just copy that spreadsheet to have different names for the different beams. Excel is one of those things that can either burn a lot of time or save you a lot of time if you're using it incorrectly. So for the time that I've saved you, why don't you spend the time to click that like button? It really helps me out and helps get this video out to more people. Goal seek is also one of those things, especially if you have to have a polynomial solver, that you can make it solve in different things or can have a concatenation of different results to get to your answer. It is using a solver to get to that answer. So it's something that where you potentially don't know what the minimum result is or where the intersection is going to be. It tries to either solve for zero or for the number that you're looking for. So this is especially when you've got that polynomial solver that you need to do. You can use goal seek to help you find those answers. If something gets even more complicated, it's where the seek goal seek can help you find the minimum results, can either help you find when it crosses zero or where the interactions are. This is really powerful in things like when we're trying to find the neutral axis for a beam. It's one of those things that needs to be solved. It's not necessarily a fixed formula. You can get pretty close with the fixed formulas, but it's not the exact answer. So you can use goal seek to refine your answer and getting you to the better result. But key tip, you do need to load it into each spreadsheet that you're using to make sure it's a function that's actually applied. So sometimes you need to go into the settings to apply it and add it into your system. Thanks FlexiSpot for sponsoring this video. They just sent me out this new standing desk. I've been using this standing desk now for a couple of weeks. I can also stand up and push it around to wherever I need with these easy to install wheels on the base. It comes with a variety of accessories such as this drawer and the ways to hide your cables around the back, making it neat and clean from every view. There's something to point out about the E7 Pro is that it has height adjustability and has dual motors so it can lift quite a lot of weight so I can lift my monitors with ease. They also have these standing desk tables that are also high quality. So if I need to work in a different area on a different setup, I can stand up wherever I need to. They have so much faith in their product. They also have a 15 year warranty and they also offer a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you don't like it, you can return it hassle free. They have a wide variety of different tops that you can choose from, not just in size, but also in finish. You can also pick the legs and the accessories so it can suit whatever space you need it to. Don't forget to check the below description for an exclusive offer from FlexiSpot. Pivot tables is also one of those things if you've got a lot of bulk data, they can also help with some of those similar match offset functions as well. So a pivot table helps you sort, find data, find trends, and really transform how the data is being handled and the results that you're trying to pull out. Pivot tables can be a little bit tricky to use, but it's something that would be very powerful in used in the right situation. If you set them up correctly as well, they can be used across multiple areas. Most of the data that we get out of software is produced in a certain way. So if you set up the pivot table so it's pulling from a set of data that doesn't change, or for example, you'll just put new data in to assess that, you can use the pivot table to help process that data in the way that you want to. For example, if you want to create a pivot table that analyzes the load distribution across different beams, you can easily do that with a pivot table type of system. So a lot of time when you've got bulk data or a lot of structures, you can use the pivot table to help make it easy to use and it's easier to break down. Automation is something that's also built into Excel that you may not have seen or may not have used. So any task that's repetitive, such as you need to set up a spreadsheet in a certain way from loading specific data, such as CSV files, you can have a script written to your needs. But what you can also do, if you don't necessarily know how to do that, you can hit the record function and physically do it yourself the first time. Then you look at the code and change it so it can be more dynamic to how you want to use it. 
So VBA allows you to set up those repetitive tasks. It allows you to do things such as drop down boxes when you need to have a specific sub filtering from an action. You can also put it in things such as the base code of each of the cells. So for example, if you've got a spreadsheet that's gonna be a little bit too heavy and you wanna turn off the calculations on each of the other spreadsheets other than the one you're currently working on, you can have that set up by just doing it through each tab. So each tab also has a background of VBA into it that you can help to process to speed up your data. You also have things like on catch or on change that's trying to look for a certain answer. That means that when you do something, it applies a different task. So it's something that you repetitively do over and over again, especially the same way. Something that you might wanna do and record through what you're doing once, have a look at what the code is and rewriting it more for your needs. This is also a very easy way to move into programming, but make sure you don't use it too heavily. And I'll tell you why later. What you'll find a lot of time as well, and this is one of the things that you shouldn't be using Excel for. Eventually you'll find that you're trying to process too much data or trying to process it in the wrong way, especially if you don't need it for the visual needs, you just need the answers out. A lot of people will get into using VBA, will get into Excel and just make bigger and bigger and bigger spreadsheets. And they can get very big, very cumbersome and very slow. Now looking at things such as Python. Now Python is something that's very easy to use and very easy to program. So once you've got used to and comfortable to using VBA, making sure that you're just not staying there and moving into something more like a detailed programming language. For example, I had one assessment that would take about, I don't know, three, four hours to run, if not more. It was processing a lot of data and it was saving me a lot of time. If I was to do it by hand, it would take weeks. So one weekend, I got a little bit bored and I learned to program Python. So I went into Python and looked at how to do the assessment. And within one weekend, I had a program out of Python that could do the same thing. But instead of being hours, it was literally seconds and it would get me to the right result quicker by analyzing it in a specific way. So Excel should be there to try and process a lot of data when you can to a certain point. When it's getting too big, move it to Python. Where if you're doing a once-off, again, check out MathDrop. It's really a great tool that will help you with those detailed assessments. But to allow you to do that assessment, to allow you to move into the next stages, you need to have a solid founding of understanding of structural mechanics and how things actually work. So I've got a quick rule of thumb about the secrets of concrete design that you may have missed that will help bring your designs to the next level. And if you are gonna pick it up, now is a perfect time to pick up desks from FlexiSpot as they currently have their full sale where you can have 50% off selected products. And you get a further $50 off by using my exclusive code YTE7P50. You can either pick up an E7 Pro, E7 Plus, or an E7L. 